We begin tonight with breaking news on just how unhinged the final days of the last administration were and how much worse they might have gotten. We have some examples which are just now coming to light. America's top military commander comparing then President Trump's rhetoric to Hitler's and his followers to brown shirts to Nazis. That top commander finding himself rallying subordinates to protect the peaceful transfer of authority and perhaps even head off a coup. Having to explain to the Speaker of the House that no, this country will not launch a nuclear strike at the whim of who she characterized as an unbalanced president. These and other chilling scenes are contained in a new book, I Alone Can Fix It, Donald J. Trump's catastrophic final year. The authors are Pulitzer Prize winning journalists from the Washington Post, Carol Lennig and Philip Rucker. It comes out next week. CNN has obtained a series of excerpts, each which is really more alarming than the next. In this one, General Mark Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, is reassuring his deputies about preventing a coup attempt. Quoting now from the book, They may try, but they're not going to effing succeed, he told them. You can't do this without the military. You can't do this without the CIA and the FBI. We are the guys with the guns. CNN Special Correspondent Jamie Gangale is doing the reporting on this for us. She joins us now. I mean, it's fascinating to hear how far General Milley and what exactly how he saw this. Um, according to their parallels, according to the book about what the former president said about the election being stolen and Adolf Hitler's rhetoric. Absolutely. Milley was so shaken by Trump's behavior that what he did was he got together with the other chiefs, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and they planned, they believed there really could be a coup attempt by Trump. And Lennig and Rucker write, Milley viewed Trump as, quote, the classic authoritarian leader with nothing to lose. And then Milley is quoted as saying, this is a Reichstag moment, Milley told aides, the gospel of the Fuhrer. Look, we've known that people were concerned um, that Trump wouldn't leave office. We, we reported that. To hear General Milley say this, it's clear when you read the book, he cooperated. There are extensive right. quotes. To hear And he comes him, off looking pretty good from what I understand. He does. And, and, and let's remember he had his Lafayette Square very bad Right, moment. which he apologized for. He, he was, I believe, in combat fatigues, walking uh, with the president in that kind of motley assortment of people from the White House to, to Lafayette Square. A very bizarre moment. Yeah. But to hear General Milley say this uh, is stunning. The, there were also, according to his book, daily check-in calls that Milley started to do with uh, Mark Meadows and some others. So one of the interesting things about that is in the book, uh, Millie says he was doing it also to keep tabs on Trump, as if by talking to Pompeo and Mark Meadows, he would get a better sense of what's going on. We should say that Pompeo has denied some of this account to the authors. But there is uh, a, another extraordinary moment where after January 6th, and Millie has seen the insurrection, he is now preparing for the inauguration with other law enforcement officials, with the National Guard at Fort Myer. And he is so worried that there is going to be another violent attack by Trump supporters that he says to the other senior advisors, quote, here's the deal, guys. These guys are Nazis. They're Boogaloo boys. They're Proud Boys. These are the same people we fought in World War II. Everyone in this room, whether you're a cop, whether you're a soldier, we're going to stop these guys to make sure we have a peaceful transfer of power. We're going to put a ring of steel around this city, and the Nazis aren't getting in. That's incredible to hear. There's also uh, a lot of revolutions, uh, revelations, including one uh, after the insurrection, General Milley uh, and uh, Congresswoman Liz Cheney, in which Cheney, who voted for impeachment, describes a confrontation she had, it was during the attack, right. uh, during the insurrection, Republican Congressman uh, Jim Jordan uh, kind of, I guess, tell us what happened. So Jim Jordan is a staunch ally of President Trump. He's the head of the uh, Freedom Caucus. He is known to make a circus out of things. He is certainly the antithesis on the impeachment of, Liz, of you know, Liz Cheney right. uh, supported, it, right. supported the impeachment. So uh, Millie, and, and Cheney are actually 
close. They're friends, they talk a lot. They have a phone call, and in the book, Millie says to Cheney, this is the next day, the seventh, how are you doing? And she recounts this encounter with Jim Jordan, and she says, quote, that effing guy, Jim Jordan, that son of a, you can read it on the screen, Cheney said, while these maniacs are going through the place, I'm standing in the aisle, and he said, we need to get the ladies away from the aisle. Let me help you. I smacked his hand away and told him, get away from me. You effing did this. Mm. Uh, I don't think Liz Cheney felt she needed Jim Jordan's help at that I, it's moment. It's fascinating that during, I mean, according to this, that, I mean, during the actual insurrection, Liz Cheney saw this as a direct result of Jim Jordan and the other enablers of, of the former president. Absolutely. Looking back, we knew about the big lie. And Jim Jordan was close to the president. He was probably calling the president every day, a couple of times a week. Uh, in the weeks leading up to January 6th, it was not a surprise to Liz Cheney mm. that this happened and she feels that Jim Jordan was part of it. I, I want to bring, uh, also with us, stay with us, because right. I want to bring in our chief political correspondent and State of the Union co-anchor, Dana Bash, also a CNN senior law enforcement analyst and former FBI director, Andrew McCabe. So, Dana, we're, we're talking about concerns from the country's top military officer of an attempted coup by the president of the United States and his allies. It's, this is one of those things you have to kind of step back and just kind of realize this is so out of the ordinary. Uh, there were clearly a lot of, you know, a lot worse things happening behind the scenes, according to this, than anyone knew publicly. Absolutely. And, you know, it is important to understand and learn this for lots of reasons. But first and foremost, it's because, yes, it's history, but it is recent history, and it informs what is going on right now. And that is, if General Milley was you know, saying these things and screaming from the rooftops and having conversations, Jamie's reporting also uh, about this book, is that Nancy Pelosi, the House Speaker, was involved in conversations, then there's no way that the Republican leadership weren't also aware of some of this, even if they didn't have uh, direct conversations with the likes of General Milley. Those Republican leaders are currently running the GOP and running towards Donald Trump still, right now. And that is what it, one of the things, if you look at it from where we are now, is so remarkable that even those days, these stories, what happened on January 6th and the days following, if that's not enough for them to say, wow, we have to stand up and separate ourselves from him, it's hard to imagine what is. And Andrew, I just want to read this part about the coup again uh, for your reaction. Uh, Millie says, they may try, uh, but they're not going to effing succeed. He told them, you can't do this without the military. You can't do this without the CIA and the FBI. We are the guys with the guns. I mean, obviously, there's an awful lot of guns out there in circulation, so there's a lot of people who do have guns. But the chairman of the Joint Chiefs was essentially ready for a showdown with the commander-in-chief and comparing him to Hitler. Yeah, he was apparently, uh, and 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 sounds like he was actually thinking through the mechanics of what a, uh, a a military conflict, a hot conflict, would look like, and how that would play out here in the capital. And it's it's absolutely extraordinary. I think it fortunately shines yet another light on the commitment and the dedication of career public servants, this time, of course, General Milley and, and his team in the military, um, with the courage to stand up to realize that something was going horribly off the rails with the President of the United States, um, and that they might be thrown into a terrible, terrible, never before thought of or experienced scenario in which they had to do exactly what you suggested, which is stand up to the President himself. Um, but they were willing to do it because we have those sort of dedicated career professionals serving in government. Well, it also, you know, Andrew, it makes you think about all those people who took part in the insurrection, who attacked the Capitol, who call themselves patriots. And that word patriot has now been kind of taken over by far right, you know, there were far right nationalists who marched, I think it was through Philadelphia the other day, calling themselves patriots. Uh, you read what Milley was doing and which, you know, is obeying the Constitution. It's it's standing up to the oath that he and serving members uh, ha have taken. 
Uh, I mean, that's what a patriot does. That's exactly right, Anderson. That's exactly right. So patriot is someone who stays committed to that oath to the Constitution, despite the, the politics and the craziness that's swirling around him. It does the right thing for the American people obeying the law, unlike the direction they were being pushed by the by the presidency of the United States. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's just absolutely stunning. And the way that that crowd that attacked our Capitol on January 6th has completely co-opted the symbology and the terminology of patriotism is, is an offense. And it should be an offense to all Americans. Those are not patriots and who uh, threw themselves on the Capitol and, and through the doors and windows of our, uh, the Capitol on January 6th. They're yeah. not.